Hello, everyone. I'm Xin Jianzhen from UW Medicine. Here, I will talk about the detail of our paper, Flow-Based Generative Model for Learning Manifold-to-Manifold -manifold Mappings. These are my collaborators, Rujo, Liu, and my advisor, Vikas. Though Euclidean data is the currently main focus of the deep learning field, the manifold value data is also important in some situation. For example, the directional data can be viewed as a vector on some, uh, on some sphere. Also, the covariance matrix lie in some SPDN manifold. And the diffusion of water molecules in brain images is represented by structured measurements, such as diffusion tensor imaging, DTI, and orientation distribution function. ODF. To measure the structure of the brain, the patient needs to stay steady in the machine for a while to get the raw diffusion MRI data. The data is acquired by applying strong magnetic field gradients along different angles. There are majorly two different diffusion taps. If there's no fiber bundles around that spatial location, the water molecular can diffuse freely. However, if there's a fiber bundle around, the water molecular can mainly diffuse along that fiber direction. We can use a Gaussian distribution to fit that diffusion pattern, where the covariance metrics represent the diffusion direction. If we measure all the location inside the brain, we can get the diffusion tensor imaging called DTI. As the nature of the 3x3 three three covariance matrix, it considers only about one major direction. Thus, the angular resolution is relatively low. But the good part of DTI is that it only requires 7 to 9 minutes scan time. On the other hand, if we want more accurate angular, angular information, for example, when there are two fibers across at the same location, the DTI might not be accurate enough. In this case, we can use a distribution function over the sphere to measure the probability of the water molecular to diffuse along that direction. If there's no fiber, the distribution may be like a uniform distribution. If two fibers crossing each other, there may be four peaks over the distribution function. Similar as DTI, if we measure the distribution function at each location inside the brain, we can get the orientation distribution function called ODF. The biggest benefit of ODF over DTI is the ability to measure the crossing. Also, the angular resolution is much higher for ODF. But to get a clear ODF, it would require much longer scan time 35 minutes. It is five times longer than DTI. So if we can find a way to generate ODF from the given DTI, we can use seven to nine minutes scan time to generate a much higher and clear angular resolution images. It would be quite useful in the real world application. But one important thing to notice here is that neither of the value for the voxels lie in the Euclidean space. For example, the voxel of DTI lies in the SPD3, while ODF lies in the hypersphere. To enable the operator on these manifold values, the first attempt will be to vectorize all the values from those manifolds into the Euclidean space. However, if directly vectorize them, there's no guarantee that the value after the, the operator still lie inside the manifold. For example, if we apply the matrix multiplication as shown here, the point will go outside the sphere. Even if we manage to project the value back into the manifold, if directly applying convolution network on DTI to op output the ODF, the spatial resolution may be blurry due to the nature of CNN. Thus, 
In this paper, our main goal is to find the following two missing pieces. The operators on manifold and the, manifold, and the method to transfer the modalities between different manifolds. First, let's look at what type of operators can work on manifold. For the Euclidean data, if we are given two points, x1 and x2, we can multiply a scalar alpha or add two points such that all the values after those operators remain inside the same Euclidean space. We can also define the distance here, which is just the norm of x2 minus x1. However, the manifold here we care about is Riemannian manifold, which is smooth. But since it's not, since it's not linear globally, the multiplication and the addition are not preserved. But the good part is the distance can be defined in Riemannian manifold. We have shown that the distance is preserved in manifold space, while the addition and multiplication are not. So how should we extend the Euclidean operators into manifold? For a neural network, the basic operators required are multiplication, addition, and activation function. Riemannian manifold is equipped with tangent space at each point P that varies smoothly from point to point. Also, we can define the invertible chart map between manifold and an Euclidean space, the tangent space. Thus, we can define the multiplication and the activation function in that simple space and inverse map it back to the manifold. The group operators preserves distance on manifold. Since a addition operator also preserves the distance in the Euclidean space, the group operator can be viewed as addition on manifold. As shown here, the rotation is a group operator on the sphere, and it can preserve the distance on the sphere well. Then, with those operators on manifold, the remaining question is how to transfer the modalities. There are many mechanisms proposed in Euclidean domain to generate high-resolution images. There are several type of generative models. VAE encode the input X to the latent space Z with some prior distribution, for example, Gaussian. Then sample from the distribution to decode or generate the X hat here. The structure here is quite simple, but it tends to generate blurry images. GANs are the computation between two networks. Generator generates fake data from Gaussian noise. The discriminator decides whether the input is true or fake data. If we want to extend GAN to manifold space, these two networks, generator and discriminator, needs to be fine-tuned carefully. Normalizing flow model trains an invertible network to map the distribution between data and the latent Gaussian distribution. Among all these different methods, Normalizing flow requires only one neural network, thus it is easier to be extended into manifold space. For the normalizing flow model, I use many invertible blocks of network to map input data X into latent Z, which, is, which has known prior distribution. And when generating new data, we can just sample from latent Z and inverse the network. We can calculate the log likelihood of data X using prior distribution of Z and the determining of Jacobian matrix between Z and X shown here. If the Jacobian is a triangular matrix, the determinant will be easier to compute. There are three basic structures for the normalizing flow-based model called ACNORM, one by one convolution, and a fine coupling layer. Let's look at them one by one with the extension to manifold version. We first extend the operators into the basic operators, multiplication and addition. The network will look like this for the Euclidean data. 
to extend it into manifold version data. We first modify the multiplication part. As we discussed before, we can define the multiplication in the tangent space and apply the chart maps. Then for the addition, we change it into the group operator such that after applying operator T, the distance is preserved. Then we can look at the one by one convolution. The only operator required here is the multiplication. Thus, to extend it into the manifold, similar as the ACNORM layer, we can apply the chart map to change the operator in the tangent space. Then the last layer is a fine coupling layer, which is slightly different. The NN here represents the traditional neural network, which is hard to extend to manifold directly. So on the other, so invert, inversely, we project the data XA into the tangent space and apply the neural network on the tangent space such that it only operator operates on Euclidean data. Then for the second equation, it requires multiplication and addition. So we can use the tangent space and the group operators to substitute them. The last one contains no operators. But since we have applied the chart map before, we will need to project it back to the manifold space. Thus, we have all three invertible layers defined. For the Euclidean data, this viewed as the basic blocks of GLOW model. And in our case, this is the modified version on Manifold. Let's go back to our main goal, which is to generate ODF based on DTR. Since directly generating is not good enough, we first invertible map DTI or ODF into the latent space where the distribution is Gaussian and then we define the transformation in the latent space. For the experiment, we apply our model on the, on the HCP dataset, which contains more than 1,000 samples. This is the generated ODF from our method. The fiber bundles are preserved well. Also, to verify if our me method can preserve the difference between groups, we apply the permutation testing on each voxels. We first compute the distance between two means of the group and permute the samples. To have the distribution of the distance, if the original distance appear to be in the extreme part, the voxel is believed to be different between groups. Then we apply the same test on different voxels one by one. As shown here, the ODF performs as the ground truth. The color highlights the group-wise different voxels. Compare with the FA and the input DTI, our method can preserve the group-wise difference for the generated ODF. In this paper, we extend the operators on manifold also, we modify the invertible network GLOW into manifold space. And finally, we enable the generation between two manifold modalities, such as DTI to ODF, which is useful in the real-world application.